You've seen me do yeast leavened pita bread before. Today I'll be doing the flatbreads again, but this time I'll be making them from sourdough. So grab your starter and let's make sourdough pita bread. Welcome to the Bear Pantry Show. If you're looking for authentic Belizean recipes, then you're in the right place. My name is Barbara and this is Cooking Made Simple. So I grabbed one of my starters from the fridge and we're going to activate it. This is one cup of all-purpose flour and one cup of filtered water. Let me go ahead and stir this up. I want to make this into a paste. Did you hear that pop? So look at the hooch. We're going to go ahead and mix this back in. It smells like wine. This stuff on the top smells like wine. So let's stir it up. And then I'm going to pour everything from the jar into what I have in a bowl already. I'm going to wash my bottle out, don't worry. And then set this aside for at least three hours. Go ahead and screenshot this because this is what we're going to need to make the pita breads. All right, so this is about five hours later. Look at all the bubbles. Let me stir it up. Now we're going to make the mother one cup of the proofed sponge. And then to that, I'm going to add half cup of filtered water and half cup of all-purpose flour. Let me mix this up. And then I'm going to pour this in here. I need the cup with the spout so I could put everything back in the bottle, all right? All right, so back in the jar, and then that goes back on the fridge. So this is about two cups of the proof sponge that's left over, and this is what we're going to actually use to make the bread. So to this, I'm going to add half a teaspoon to one teaspoon of salt, depending on how salty you like it, and then one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And then we're just going to add flour. Now, I did this video for YouTube before, and when I Googled it the other night, it came up on the first page, guys, so it's doing well. So all we have to do is add flour until a dough forms. Take your time with it because you don't want it to get too dry, all right? So let's see how it's looking. Yeah, it's coming together nicely as a dough. Let me go ahead and dump it out on the counter. And it's a really sticky dough, all right? So you're going to have to flour it a lot. Let me get more. Well, let me knead this first before I add more flour. Okay, it's coming together. It's still sticky and soft. I want to make it into a dough ball like this. I'm going to wash my bowl and then grease it with some olive oil because I don't want it to um, give me trouble to come out. Set it here for about, I'd say four hours, three, four hours. So this is about three and a half hours later. Now we're going to re-knead. So it does take a lot of time, okay guys? You're going to have to have patience if you want to do this. And I'm going to cut this into, well, into half first. Let's go right down two pieces, two long pieces, and then into eight. Equal as my eyes can see. So now let's start rolling these into balls. So keep flour on hand because you're going to constantly have to flour this stuff. And I have a baking tray that's greased. Then I'm going to set these on, but if you don't have a baking tray, set them on the counter, but grease the counter first, all right? Here we go. See, you make a dome first on the top, flip it over, kind of pinch the bottom shut, and then roll it between your two hands or on the counter, and then set them on the tray. Here we go. This is the last one. Cover it up again and wait for about an hour and a half to two hours. This is an hour and a half later. And now we're going to roll them out like a tortilla. And I have my cast iron skillet coming up to temp. Stick the first one in. Cover it up if you want to make the pockets, all right? So it's coming along. I don't think the cast iron skillet is hot enough yet. But it's going to get there as we go along. So this is the first one. Yeah, it's not ugly. Doesn't have any big pockets, but not ugly. Put the second one in. Cover it up. And then, now I can't wait. I can't do all eight of these and not taste. This is meant to be eaten hot. So I'm going to put some butter and taste in the middle of the show. I don't normally do this, but we have to taste. It's pretty good, guys. The sourness is just right. So I'm rolling out two right now, but 
I think it's easier if I do one at a time. See, a pocket, look, this one has a little pocket coming. Look at this big pocket on this one. No, look at this one, guys. The whole thing is a pocket. Let me go ahead and flip it over. Ooh, it opened. Me and Joshua ate that one, so we only have 70%. Look, see? Hmm, beautiful. You saw how some of them kind of poof up because they're pita pockets, right? Pita bread? So these are so delicious, and you already know, well, if you've watched my other video that I did with uh, pita bread before, that the sourdough pita bread, you know that we make pizzas out of these. So I'm going to eat like half a one because me and Joshua shared the other one. <laughs> so I'm going to get a whole one with some of this chicken that Joe made right here with the paper. A lemon herb chicken thing that Joe likes to do in the oven broil. I have a video here at the site and at the page because you know I'm doing Facebook and YouTube. All right, guys. So that's it. You, you saw me taste already. Put some hot butter on it. Well, the butter's not hot, right? <laughs> the thing is hot. Put some butter. Ooh, yes. And I gotta go get some veggies. Shouldn't be eating all this flour. But you can see a few ingredients, right? The starter, the salt, the olive oil, and some more flour. And you're ready. So tell me how your came up. Took a while. It took a while. You just have to set the thing at first for three hours, the starter to proof. Then knead it up, and that takes about three to four hours for it to poof up. And then an hour and a half later, we're cooking. <sighs> the things I go through for sourdough. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're seeing me on Facebook, don't forget to follow and like the page and put me in your watch so that you can know when I upload another video. And if you're seeing me on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my uploads. Bye now.